Yeah, Call the meeting to order. I want to welcome everybody here again. A few of the same faces, a couple new ones. The regular council meeting for February 16th. I'd like to ask Councillor Penner to bring the opening, please. Thank you. Uh, last time I brought the opening, I had spoken a little bit about my father and his influence, I guess, in my decision to get into politics. So today I thought I'd talk about my mom. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, MLA Calvin Gertson had presented myself and Carrie Penner with, I guess, uh, a token representing 100 years of women being able to vote. And that just got me thinking, it's something I had taken for granted and I haven't really thought too much about, um, I guess, the opportunities maybe women had lacked in previous generations. Uh, my mom has been a huge influence on my life because when she was 39 years old, she uh, started her nurse's training. She'd always wanted to be a nurse, but at that time, to start a four-year program was shocking. And I remember it, um, I remember it being difficult. I, I think I was in grade three when she started. She went to school full-time, but I always remember being very proud as well and in our house it kind of was no option we had to go to university after school and get an education and then um, years ago I decided I wanted to get my MBA I wanted to target at least to get started before I was 40 because my benchmark always had been that 39 years old because that's when my mom had started nurses training and so I ended up uh, graduating from my MBA when I was 38 but many times uh, throughout those years, because it's, it's, it's quite a difficult program, people came up to me and would just say, how do you do it, um, why do you do it, etc. But for me, it was just always a very natural thing. It's how I had, gr I had grown up. My mom had been in school when I, was a, when I was a kid, and I guess maybe I didn't appreciate at that time uh, the positive influence that had on my life. Uh, because especially given her nature, because she's really laid back and an easygoing, easygoing person. So after she'd heard that I'd given my dad a tribute, I said I'd make sure that I would mention her today. So I think that combination of my dad being in politics and also my mom's example of working hard and getting an education, no matter when you start, it's still worth it, has had a profoundly deep impact uh, on the, the road I've chosen as well. So that's just another one of those things I wanted to bring up of why I'm here today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Panner. We have the agenda in front of us, and just want to add 12A. Councillor Funk has a motion for 12A uh, that uh, you want to add. You will tell us about it later on. Uh, we have the minutes in front of us from February, 20, uh, fe February 2nd, regular council meeting on page one. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Councillor Funk, second by Councillor Dijkstra. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. We have no public hearings, and we have the reports and recommendations from the city manager on page page six. Mr. Workentine, I'll ask you to just introduce uh, this in regards to the brokery zon uh, zon uh, zoning bylaw. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, one point of order before we proceed. Uh, the resolution to adopt the agenda was not uh, passed by Council. That's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to get through this. <laughs> we have no agenda. Councillor, we still don't have an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I've been accused of... Councillor Fair <laughs> moves that. Second by Councillor Penner. All those in favour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Workentine. That will be the first and only mistake tonight. <laughs> Go ahead. Very good. Uh, this uh, matter is uh, just for Council's uh, information. Uh, the City received, uh, recently received notice of uh, uh, a zoning bylaw amendment 01-2016 uh, by the arm of the brokery. Uh, the information, including the uh, public notice, uh, a summary of the proposed bylaw amendments as well as the uh, relating supporting material that was provided along with the notices included in the agenda package for Council. Uh, the uh, administration has, uh, has investigated the proposed amendments 
uh, also had uh, further discussion with uh, community planning uh, based on uh, that review uh, and the uh, the, re um, the amendments that are being proposed uh, administration does not have any concerns as there do does not appear to be any uh, negative uh, impacts that would be incurred uh, for the city of Steinbeck and uh, recommendation is that city council give favorable favorable consideration and not object to uh, the proposed bylaw amendment okay. thank you Mr. Wilkening, just uh, there might be a couple questions from Council, I'm not sure, but the first question is in regards to the transition zone that we have agreement with, with the arm of the Brook Creek. Uh, does that come into play at all in the uh, zoning bylaw, or is it not mentioned, or is that part of the official community plan on their part? Um, the transition zone is identified within the, uh, within the development plan uh, of the arm of the Brook Creek. Uh, the, uh, the zoning bylaw uh, generally relates to administrative provisions, uh, so the primary guiding document is the uh, development plan. So this does not affect that in any way? No. Good. Thank you. Any other com uh, questions from Council? All right. Mr. Workney, you do not need a motion for, for us to not object. Uh, do you need any other motion? Uh, at this point, if there is uh, no desire for City Council to register an objection, then uh, the City uh, would not need uh, formal direction, no. Thank you. Does Council wish to proceed with anything? Nothing? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for re reviewing that. We have 9A, the accounts payable, in the back of the book. I have a motion, please. Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Funk. Any discussion? All those in favour? We have building permits for January on page 27. You see there's just over $1.5 million of building, $1.5 million of building permits for January. Thank you. Second by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Third. We have bylaw 2059, the special services, the curbside collection on page 28. Mr. Workington, I'll ask you to just briefly introduce this. We already have approved first and second reading. We're just waiting on third. Uh, that's correct. Uh, this uh, particular bylaw is third reading to uh, City of Steinbeck Special Service Plan 2016-1 and bylaw 2059. It's for the residential curbside waste collection service. Uh, the proposed uh, uh, special service plan was uh, for a three-year term. Um, from uh, 2016 to 2018 uh, to permit the city conti to continue its service uh, of residential curbside solid waste collection. Uh, the, uh, at the public hearing, there was one objection registered. Uh, that objection was considered by the municipal board. Uh, as per the order that's included within the agenda package, the uh, municipal board has uh, approved the city's uh, application. Uh, and as such, council may now give this special service plan and bylaw a third reading. Thank you. Council, I would like to proceed. Councillor Siemens, motion to approve. Approve third reading. Second by Councillor Swagstrom. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a uh, request for uh, added uh, fees for residential uh, curbside waste uh, pickup. It's $3 for 2016, $3 for 2017, $4 for 2018, so a $10 increase over uh, the next three years. And uh, as uh, indicated, uh, the Municipal Board also agrees that this is uh, a strategy city should use to increase their, their garbage rates. Thank you. Further discussion? Anything from Council? Call for the question. All those in favour? Carried. We have bylaw 2060. This is on uh, page 77. Mr. Workington, anything to add? This was uh, a bylaw and uh, local improvement plan to uh, authorize the issue of debt for a uh, local improvement project identified as a Barkman Avenue renewal. Again, uh, this particular bylaw has been uh, reviewed. Uh, by the Manitoba Municipal Board, uh, which has given its approval, uh, and as such, City Council may now proceed to give this uh, debt or this local improvement bylaw third reading. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. And this is the only debt uh, uh, creation that is going to be occurring in 2016. Is that correct? That is correct. How would Council like to proceed? 
Councilor Spikster. I'll make a motion we give third reading. Thank you. Second by Councilor Penner. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It makes sense for us to uh, proceed. The total cost of the project of uh, uh, reconstructing Barkman Avenue is uh, about $2.1 million. Uh, just under half of that comes from the million dollars that we're bordering, uh, borrowing. Most of the rest of that is coming from funding from other levels of government. So this is a partnership. And uh, so it's appropriate that we uh, move ahead. It's, uh, we need to continue renewing our, our infrastructure. Thank you. Further discussion? Anything else from Council? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor of third reading? Carried. Any questions of Council? Seeing none, we will then move to correspondence. Uh, 11A, St. Matt River Conservation District. This is on page 89. Any questions? Seeing none, we also have 11B, St. Red River Conservation District uh, Management Report, page 92. Any questions? It is information. And uh, Conservation District uh, Programs, the Provincial Update from December 2015. This is on page 94. Any comments or questions? Take it as information. We will now move to our delegation, the Steinbeck Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for coming to see us here today. This was a request after a discussion that uh, took place between myself and the Executive Director. And uh, Mr. Schmidt, I believe you're, uh, you're on, so I'll get you to take the podium. Please just state who you're here on behalf of and you are on camera. So. I'm, uh, I'm, on, I'm here on behalf of the Steinbeck Chamber of Commerce. Uh, my name is Tim Schmidt. I'm the Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce. Cam, Cameron Bergen is the President of the Steinbeck Chamber of Commerce and typically would be the one addressing Council, but he's away on some pri uh, personal stuff, and so you're stuck with me today. Um, so thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'll just read. We kind of prepared a statement so that it's a little bit organized rather than rambling because I'm a bit of a rambler. Um, so I'll just read it. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Steinbeck Chamber of Commerce, I would like to thank Council for your consideration and urgency to act on the issues related to the recent mobile sign bylaw. We recognized, we recognize and appreciate Council's concern for the needs of the business community and the ability for Commerce to continue in an effective way. We know that Council revised the bylaw with best intentions and with the information that was available at the time. However, since inception of the revised mobile sign bylaw, other issues have arisen and been drawn to our attention by the business community. Uh, some examples are the size of the signs that are currently, currently and predominantly used are not compatible with certain zones. Uh, large shopping centers and large properties are significantly limited compared to current usage. And um, on-premise, off-premise stipulations mean that organizations like nonprofits and charities uh, are either extremely limited or cannot use mobile signage at all. In light of the current information that's available and with these other issues in mind, uh, the Steinbeck Chamber of Commerce would like to make the f uh, following formal request uh, that uh, to strike an ad hoc committee to review all aspects of the mobile sign bylaw with the result of an entirely new bylaw that provides comprehensive policy and meets the, meets the needs of uh, citizens, business and government. We would request that this committee be comprised of three city councillors, three chamber of commerce representatives, and possibly at council's discretion, a uh, representative from city staff who will administer the bylaw. In closing, the Steinbeck Chamber of Commerce, uh, on behalf of the businesses of Steinbeck, would again like to recognize the efforts of council to not only be conscientious of the needs of the business, business community, but also to act, act expeditiously to correct a bylaw that was found to be inconsistent with the needs of our city. We look forward to constructively working together with council to enact systems that will effectively meet the needs of citizens, business, and government in our great city. Thank you. There might be some questions for you, so yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to stick it. This is something that Linda probably didn't tell you about, but there might be questions. That's all good. Uh, first of all, I would just want to say thank you for coming uh, coming to see us today. Uh, we do recognize that we did make some changes to the uh, signage bylaw, or the zoning bylaw, where the signage uh, stipulations are in. Uh, we they, there were a number of things that were brought to or there's one thing that was brought to our attention, and that was the uh, length of time for that, and that is something that council did want to correct and did actually uh, correct uh, uh, a, a little while back. Uh, however, you are saying that there are other things that have come up and since then, I've, after some discussions, informal and so on, 
we recognize that. And so uh, thank you for offering a partnership to help resolve that. I think it, uh, I'll speak for Council in that I think we want to see uh, a balanced approach for signage and that is it re respects businesses and, and uh, community organizations that actually function uh, and also respects the, uh, the, visit, the view and the beauty of our city. And so uh, that will take some additional work from what we're hearing from you. Uh, because there are still some things that are uh, a challenge for businesses as well as not not for profits and so uh, I won't give you an answer today that we will uh, set up this committee or ad hoc committee exactly but uh, certainly we'll get back to the uh, Chamber of Commerce shortly and uh, whether it's with the uh, the uh, committee of council as a whole or some ad hoc group like this we will uh, we will we will listen to, to what has been said and what will be said. So, thank you. There might be some questions. Any questions from Council? I spoke too soon, I'm sorry. Oh, let me off the hook so easy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council, for your consideration. Yeah. All right. Council, uh, we uh, obviously have heard some feedback informally, and now we hear it formally. Uh, about some challenges with uh, continued challenges that have been brought up that we weren't aware of at the time that we looked at the uh, at the bylaw, um, uh, we will uh, take this under advisement and whether uh, we deal with it through an ad hoc committee, which I don't think is necessarily a bad idea, or whether it's actually committee of council as a whole, uh, we'll uh, make that decision in due time. So, thank you. We will now move to. Uh, number 12 and sorry before we move I just do want to say too that uh, we aren't going to drag this out uh, this is something that's current for for the uh, the chamber members and so uh, we will be expeditious in, in dealing with this uh, over the coming weeks 12 a we have a motion in regards to uh, well Councillor Funk go ahead okay I'll just read my motion the way I have it written be it resolved that the city of Steinbach officially ask Hanover School Division to consider freezing taxes in 2016. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councilor Penner, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. One of the largest concerns that's come up over, the, over some time as, as residents are talking to me is taxation. Taxes, their tax bill always seems to be going up. Yeah, we haven't had a, a, an actual tax increase that that we've agreed upon on, at Council since 2012. We've also noticed that development has been slower in the last year. And what I've found over time is the best thing to spur development, to spur up business, to, to, uh, to make things really happen in the community is to leave more money in the pockets of the consumer. To do that, we need to, we need to keep taxes low. And I've learned through, through the, uh, the process of, of taxation, setting mill rates and setting taxes, that we're in it together, whether it's the, the council and, and our administration, but we do it together, we work together. We've also learned today from Brian that, that the, um, the school taxes are 55% of, of our taxation bill. This is a, a significant part of our taxes. As we, as a community, as a municipality, we're holding the line on taxes. I would like to encourage the Hanover School Division to do the same. I understand we're both building community. Hanover School Division is building community with our youth, and we're building community in other ways. But I think we can build it together, and we can work together to keep taxes down, keep taxes low for our community, to spur development, to, spur, to, 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 uh, to help our residents in a time when they're asking for taxes to remain reasonable for them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Councillor Penner, anything to add? Uh, yes, just a, a brief uh, comment on uh, Councillor Funk's uh, motion. I think uh, what he's saying is uh, important, and what he's saying is that, that uh, Council and the City itself uh, has driven to keep our taxes very low and affordable. We've coped with uh, growth in the city. We've coped with um, some 
uh, major projects that we've done, we've prioritized, we've been very prudent, I think, in our budgeting. And I think it's fair to ask the school division to do the same. I think it's fair to, to make sure that there's equity for everyone. And um, I think everyone can do their part, as he very well said. Thank you. Further discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I will support this. I'm, I am somewhat reluctant because as a governing body and them being a governing body, nobody wants to be told what we expect from them. Uh, but I, I think uh, the system is seriously flawed, and I think that maybe, uh, it, you know, this could be, I, I know that the provincial government isn't going to look at this, but it would be an ideal situation for us if we could get the school divisions to collect their own taxes, then we wouldn't have to deal with because if we hold the line on taxes and people see that our taxes don't go up, then, then we don't have to answer the, all the questions regarding increased taxes all the time. So I think, I think that uh, the least we can do is, is draw attention to this so that, uh, uh, you know, there's potential for maybe keeping our taxes in line uh, for this year or maybe um, for the not-too-distant future. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I'm not a quandary here, but I think I'm going to vote against this motion. Uh, I'm a little bit uneasy uh, writing in a, a formal letter to the Hanover School Division uh, without first discussion, having a discussion with them. In the past, we have met with the Hanover School Division as a council, and we have had these discussions. And I think at this point, uh, I think that would have been a more prudent way to go and then write a formal letter as part of the discussions. I, I agree with the intent of uh, the motion. I agree that uh, we do need to raise that awareness. I think the provincial government, uh, through AMM, we do continue to raise that issue. But at this point, the way it stands, a formal letter in this regard, I don't know if that's the first step in this. I think open discussion would be the first step. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, anything in closing? No. Council, uh, I think uh, for the last four years we've had uh, uh, no tax increases uh, brought forward by the city uh, administration and uh, by this council. Uh, we've worked very hard to stay within that and, and uh, sometimes to a fault. Uh, we, we do limit what we can do then because of that. But we also do have a very competitive city. Uh, we have a city that has the lowest taxes of any uh, city in Manitoba. Uh, in fact, Winkler is the next lowest and they're about 17, don't quote me on it, but a, approximately 17% higher than we are and they're the next lowest uh, of any uh, city outside of Winnipeg. And so we've worked very hard and we've done very well making sure that we've, we've uh, uh, managed our resources. Uh, I too am reluctant to, to uh, make an edict on what another body should be doing. They have challenges and resource pressures as well, but they aren't much different than what we face. Uh, and so I think uh, for them to consider uh, holding taxes, especially in a time when we're really trying to spur growth and trying to really encourage it, uh, is not out of the question. They do have to eventually make their own decisions, but for us to ask them to consider it, I think is appropriate. Uh, and. Uh, to Councillor Seaman's uh, suggestion that we should meet with them. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea either. Uh, certainly, I suspect this motion will involve a meeting after this. It may involve just me, <laughs> and I'll inform you of how that goes. But uh, I think it is important that uh, we continue that relationship. And just to assure Councillor Seaman's and others that we, I do have ongoing discussions on a regular basis with uh, uh, different members of... Uh, the administration of uh, our school division. And they're good people, they mean well, and they want to do the best for the children, and they want to do the best for the community. And so for them to, uh, uh, to consider this, I think, is appropriate, and uh, I will certainly uh, have a discussion in person with them. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> Thank you, Council. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Councillor uh, Penner?
Councillor Pennard. All those in favour. Carried.